Step 4. Two-pass setup. In this step, let's talk about how to create a connection between uh, end-to-end nodes. In principle, we've done this many times and it's straightforward. We start with our nodes and a path connecting them. And first, what we do is we create link-level entanglement, represented by these green lines. If we require entanglement of higher fidelity, we may wish to purify it. After that, we, uh, nodes B and C engage in entanglement swapping, creating entanglement between nodes A and D. Simple. Looks like we're done. Not so fast. We're actually using a lot of assumptions and skipping over very important details. This is what the current step is about. Let's ask us a few questions. First question, who actually initiates the connection setup? In the previous example, it wasn't uh, explicitly clear. Was it A, was it D, or any of the other nodes along the path? Next question is, how many end-to-end -end bell pairs do we actually need? Is it enough to generate just a single one, or do we need many more? Related question is, what's the desired fidelity of these end-to-end -end bell pairs? And also, we know that the behavior of the nodes in the network is governed by rule sets, as we discussed in the previous uh, step. But who generates these rule sets? It's not clear. Similarly, it's not clear how the rule sets get to all of the nodes along the path. And finally, what happens if one of, or more of these nodes are busy? Let's answer these questions one by one. Let's start with the first one, who initiates the connection? In classical networks, most of the connection requests originates from clients. This could be us using our laptops, or smartphones, or TVs. And the targets of these requests are often servers, whose servers the client would like to make use of. For example, we would like to check our email, or engage in a secure online banking session, or just watch our favorite TV show. So we have a client that's reaching out to the server and asking the question, can I use your service? In quantum networks, the situation is likely the same. We have a client that is requesting a service from a quantum server. In this case, the request for the service might be slightly different. It could be, let's generate a secret key using QKD. Or, I would like to start a blind quantum computing session. We are going to talk about blind quantum computing a little bit later. A request between clients and clients, or server to server, will also occur in the context of distributed quantum computation. So the node that's starting the connection setup is called the initiator. And the node for whom the setup is, this request is targeted is called the responder. So in here, the client would be initiator and the responder would be a quantum server. Now that we've covered the first question, let's move on to how many bell pairs do we need? And a related question, what's the desired fidelity of these bell pairs? This is determined by the application the initiator wishes to run. This application could be teleportation. For example, the fidelity of the shared bell pair determines the uh, fidelity of the teleported state. So the next, next question would be, what will be teleported? And how are we going to use the data? The length of a secret key determines both the quality of the bell pairs and also how many do we need to distribute in order to satisfy the request for the length of a secret key. Also, we may wish to run tomography. In this case, fidelity is not that important. We're using tomography to actually characterize the state that we are sharing end to end. But what is important is the number of bell pairs that we use. The more bell pairs we use for tomography, the better estimate and the more accurate estimate we get of the actual physical shared bell pair. So the application determines all these parameters. Therefore, the initiator wraps them in a connection spec, which is then communicated to the responder. Let's move on to the next two question, questions. Who generates the rule sets? And how do the rule sets get uh, distributed along the path? So majority of the connections initiated by a client uh, reach out to a server, as we said before. So it makes sense that the responder is the one responsible for generating these rule sets. The question now is, what information does the responder require in order to be able to generate good quality rule sets? 
Let's consider the following example. We have a simple path with three nodes. We've got initiator with address 1.1, repeater with address 1.2, and the other end node, the responder, with address 1.3. The initiator creates a connection setup request, CES request. It includes the address of the responder, in our case 1.3, and the output states. In this case, they, the initiator may wish to share bell pairs with the responder, as well as the fidelity of this state and the duration of the connection, or in other words, how many bell pairs are needed. And the initiator sends this request to the next uh, node along the path which is node 1.2, the repeater node. The repeater node accepts this request and appends the following specs to the original request. So it's the link spec between the initiator and the repeater and creates a new connection setup request, CS rec2, which is then passed along the path to the responder. The responder accepts this request and appends its own link information, the repeater, and node 1.3. Repeater and node 1.3. This finishes the first pass along the path, connecting all the necessary information about the links and also about the end-to-end -end connection. Then the responder creates three rule sets and keeps the rule set that belongs to itself. So the 1.3 rule set and passes the other rule sets down the path towards the initiator. Repeater takes its own rule sets and passes the 1.1 rule sets to the initiator. This way we see that in this two-pass setup, the initiator first um, sends the original request to the responder. As the request is propagating down the path, the link specs are collected the responder generates the rule, corresponding rule sets and distributes them back along the path. Hence the name two-pass setup. Let's get to the final question. What if a node is busy? Nodes along a path get reserved during the connection setup process. For example here, as our initial request is passing through a repeater here, it gets reserved. It will be part of that connection and it will wait for the rule sets coming from the responder. But maybe that particular node is already part of some other connection setup. It's not free. In that case, the repeater has to reply with a message, sorry, I'm busy. I cannot take part in your connection setup. You have to wait and try a little bit later. This concludes our step on connection setup.